All right, let's write some equations of lines using the slope-intercept form, and then 5.3u is the point-slope form. So first, we'll, we'll identify the slope m. Uh, you can use the, um, let's, let's assume this is the slope formula. Use the slope formula to calculate, calculate the slope if you know the two points. Uh, then we'll find the y-intercept. You can substitute uh, the, let's see, the y-intercept, or sorry, the, uh, the slope. I bet that's what they meant for us to say. You can substitute, to find the y-intercept, uh, you can substitute the slope. And the coordinates of a point x, y on the line into y equals mx plus b, then solve for b. So we'll write the equation using slope-intercept form, given its name because right here you see the slope and the y-intercept, slope-intercept form. Um, let's write an equation <coughs> of a line that passes through the line one, or the point one two and has a slope of three. So the slope is three. Find the y-intercept. Substitute the blah 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 blah. Uh, so we'll substitute uh, three for m. 1 for x and 2 for y, solve for b. So we've got 2 for y, 3 for the slope, 2 for x, uh, oh, nope, 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 1 for x, 1 for x, 2 for y. Okay, so uh, then we have 2 equals 3 plus b, so we'll subtract 3 on both sides and we'll have negative 1, b is negative 1. Um, and we'll write the equation, we'll write it in slope-intercept form, substitute, again, 3 for m and negative 1 for b. So 3x minus 1. Write the equation of the line that passes through 2, 2, and a slope of 4, so exactly the same thing here. We've got 2 equals 4 times 2 plus b. We've got 2 equals 8 plus b. We'll subtract 8 on both sides. b equals negative 6. So y equals 4 x minus 6. Uh, write an equation of the line passing through these two points. Okay, so now we don't have the slope. We have two points, and we can use the slope formula to calculate the slope with the, these two points. So we'll do uh, y2 minus y1. We'll do it that way. y1 minus negative 3. Negative 2 minus 2. All right, so we've got uh, 1 plus 3 is 4 over negative 2 minus 2, which would be negative 4. So you got negative 1. 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. Be careful with all those negatives in the fractions. It's something that a lot of people are struggling with. If you have a negative over a negative, it's a positive. Negative divided by negative is positive. Positive divided by negative is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. Uh, and of course, positive over positive is positive. Okay, so find the y-intercept. Use the slope and the point to negative 3. Write the slope-intercept form. Um, let's see. Oh, step two. So we're on the same problem here. I got a little sidetracked. Um, so they have put in negative 3 for y. So we'll put in 2 for x. We found the slope is negative 1. So we have negative 2 plus b. So we'll add 2 to both sides. And b is negative 1. So we're substituting uh, negative 1 for m. Uh, the 2 for x, and they already helped us out and put in negative 3 for y. Uh, I'm going to write equation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, substitute negative 1 for m again, and now that we found b is also negative 1, so we have negative 1 times x minus 1, negative x minus 1. Um, for a line that passes through these two points, so we'll, let's say, take negative 13 minus 2 as long as we then take negative 8 first minus 4 get negative 15 over negative 12 and that's going to equal negative well oh, not negative we got a negative divided by negative is positive 5 over uh, 4 divide these both by th negative 3 we get 5 fourths is the slope uh, so say we take 4 and 2 for x and y 2 equals 5 fourths times 4 plus b. These 4's will cancel. We'll get 2 equals 5 plus b. 
Now we know b is equal to negative 3. So y equals m x plus b. And b is negative. OK, I'm going to write an equation here. We'll take a 4 minus a negative 2 over. Uh, so I got 4 first, so I'll use negative 3 first in the denominator. Negative 3 minus 1 equals 4 minus negative 2 would be 4 plus 2. That'd be 6. Negative 3 minus 1 would be negative 4. So we get a negative uh, 3 halves for our slope. OK. Um, now we'll substitute an x and a y. How about negative 1, or sorry, 1 and negative 2? The negative 2 for y equals m, which is a negative 3 halves times x, which is 1 if y is negative 2, plus b. Yeah, negative 2 equals negative 3 halves plus b. All right, so we add 3 halves to both sides. Add 3 halves to negative 2. You'll get b is negative 1 half. OK. Mm -hmm. So y equals m x plus b, which is negative 1 half. All right. <coughs> so now we're going to apply it to a, a semi-real life problem. So you work at a, an oil chain shop, like a Jiffy Lube or something, two hours after the shop opens. So you haven't been there for two hours. So you show up after two hours. Uh, two hours after you start, this is four hours into the actual uh, business hours, uh, a total of 11 cars have had their oil changed since the shop opened. Um, so it's 11 cars since the shop opened. It opened two hours before you even got there. OK. Uh, three hours later, a total of 14 cars have had their oil changed. At what rate are cars getting their oil changed since you started working? How many cars had their oil changed before you started to work? Um, OK. So we're supposed to write an equation and then use that equation to figure something out. OK, so they give us what? That, uh, let's see, two hours after the shop open, you come in. Two hours after you start, uh, a total of 11 cars have had their oil changed since the shop opened. So two hours the shop has been open, you show up. Two hours later, there have been 11 cars have gotten their oil changed. So that would be uh, at two hours, uh, or sorry, four hours, four hours since the shop opened. 11 cars have gotten their oil changed. OK. Three hours later, three hours after four hours being open is seven hours. 14 have gotten their oil changed. At what rate are cars getting their oil changed since you started working? Well, since you started working, we've gone from 11 cars to 14 cars in three hours. Right. So uh, we got, we've changed. 14 minus 11 cars, total of 14. It's really slowing down here. Um, <coughs> 14 minus 11 over 7 minus 4, right? So uh, three cars in three hours, or one car an hour has gotten its oil changed since you were working. OK, so at re what rate have cars been having their oil changed since you started working? One. Um, how many cars had their oil changed before you started work? Um, well, this is kind of a funny problem because obviously they were getting their oil. More cars are coming in um, before you showed up than after, which means they probably don't like you. Um, but we can just use this rate, one car per hour. Right? This is cars per hour as our rate of change or our slope that like we talked about in class. And we'll use one of these points, say 7, 14. Okay. 14 equals 1 times 7 plus b. Uh, we got uh, 14 minus 7, so 7 equals b. So y equals 1x plus 7, because that's b we just found. All right. And so they're asking us. Uh, what rate? How many cars had their oil changed before you started work? OK, so that would be the two hours uh, before you got there. So at hour two, right as you showed up, how many cars had had their oil changed? Well, at this rate, at one car per hour, let's find out at hour two, 
let's plug in 2 y equals uh, 2 plus 7 which is 9. It seems like 9 uh, cars had their oil changed at that rate. But it's a funny problem because the rate at which the cars were coming in before you showed up was much bigger than after you showed up, which happens. Business slows down from time to time. Um, the number of metric tons, let's see. Okay. Let's see. So the, the rate at which the this stuff was coming in was 437.5 thousand metric tons per year. So we've got 437.5 per one year. And this is thousand metric tons, thousand metric tons. Okay. Um, <coughs> from 1990 to 2002. So in 2002, about 9,900.5 9, thousand metric tons uh, of fruits, nuts, and vegetables were imported. So at the time, 2002, and this is going to change here in a second, it's 2002, um, there was 9,900.5. That's missing a zero. That's how many were there in that year. OK. Um, Write an equation that gives the number of thousand metric tons imported. Okay, it gives, right? It gives the amount of tons. So that would be like a y value, it would be an output value. As a function of the number of years, a function of, that would be, when you were a function of, that would be x. Okay, function of the number of years since 1990. So actually, this right here, the input shouldn't be 2002, that's way too big, because it's a function of the years since 1990. How many years since 1990? is 2002. Well, it's 12 years since 1990. 12 years after 1990 is 2012, or 2002, excuse me. Um, so first we have to write a function. So let's see what we have. We have a, a data point, and here we have a rate, which is a slope, okay? So we have 9900.5 equals the slope for uh, 437.5 thousand metric tons per year times 12 equals not equals plus B let me solve for B so we get our calculator we got 9900.5 uh, and we've got uh, this number here they're going to subtract from both sides so we'll subtract 437.5 times 12, right? So it's going to multiply these together first because it's really good at following the strict order of operations. It's going to multiply those together and subtract it from that number, and we'll have 4,650.5. That's B. 4,000, 4650.5. I keep forgetting zeros. So that's B. So our function is Y equals 430. 7.5x plus 4,650.5. This is our y-intercept. This would be our y when x is 0. x is 0 is how many years since 1990? Well, 0 years since 1990 would be 1990, meaning that in 1990, this is how many thousand metric tons of fruit, nuts, and vegetables came in. All right. So next it says find the year, find the year. That's uh, the year is the x value, okay? So find the year in which the number of metric tons reached 8,000 metric tons, 8,000,000 metric tons. Okay, well, so the metric tons is actually the y value. So 8,000 is what we want the output to be, 437.5 times x plus 4,650.5 should give us that x value, okay? So if we subtract 4,650.5 from both sides and then divide by 437.5, we'll solve for x. 8,000 minus 4650.5. Okay, so 8,000 minus 4,650.5 4, is 3,349.5. So that's what's on this side now, and we're going to divide both sides by 437.5. So x equals 7.656. What does that mean? 
Well, remember, x is the number of years since 1990. How many years is seven years since 1990? Well, it's 1997. Then 0.656, so that's a little bit past half. So um, right at half would be like uh, right in between June and July. Um, so a little bit past that might be July, maybe August. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably into August. So um, something to think about, I guess. It's uh, July or uh, August, maybe of, of 1997. Uh, anyway, here we are, or we could just call it 1997. I'm sure that the uh, the worksheet would be happy with that. Given the slope of uh, m and y-intercept of b, so this is talking in general terms of here. Um, so given m and b, we're going to substitute, um, let's see, oh, in slope-intercept form, um, m and b into y equals mx plus b. So if, it, if you're getting that uh, information right up front, substitute m and b into this equation. Given the slope m and one point, substitute m and the coordinates of the point in y equals mx plus b. Solve for b. Write the equation. Now we have b, we have m, we, we uh, put them in for m and b. Given two points, use the points to find the slope m. Then substitute m and the coordinates of I'm going to say either point. That's going to be my answer. In y equals mx plus b. Solve for b. Write the equation. Done. OK, so point slope form, uh, I guess it's a, it's a form of a linear equation. Why is it linear? Because if we graph it, it will be a line. Form of a linear equation used when a slope and point are given. And that looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Uh, the slope, the point slope form of an equation of a non-vertical line through a given point x1, y1 with a slope of m is, like we just wrote, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so the x1 and y1 are the x and y that actually come from the point m is the slope, uh, this y and x without this one down here. They're the variables y and x, like you see in, uh, in this equation, y equals mx plus b. Uh, y equals 437.5x plus 4650.5. Okay, so the y and that x are the variables that end up being in your equation in the final version. Right, so they give us a point and a slope. y minus the y from the point equals the slope 2 times x minus the x from the point. Okay, and we could call it done. We could be done with it. Substitute uh, 2 for m and... Uh, uh, 3 for x and 2 for y. And uh, we can really be done. Or we could solve for y. We could get y by itself. Right, so we, uh, we'll, so we, we'll distribute that to 2x minus 6. And then add 2 to both sides. y equals 2x minus 4. When we add 2 to negative 6, we'll get negative 4. Next, um, I'm going to graph this equation here. So let's see if we can decipher some of this information. The equation is in point slope form. You know that the slope is 1 half. And it passes through this point to uh, 2, right? Because it's y minus y1 and x minus x1. So the number that is being subtracted is the x. The number that's being subtracted is the y. Something to keep in, keep in mind is uh, what if this is at y plus 2? That would mean that the, the y was a negative 2. So plot the point 2, 2. So that's the end of that sentence, I guess. 2, 2. Find a second point on the line using uh, m equals 1 half, maybe. 
up one and over two, that's our slope, draw a line through the points. I can do that, or maybe I can't. Oof, man, this is really difficult. Um, right, an equation in point slope form of the line that passes through the point negative 3, 5 and has a slope of 4. So now we're on our own here. All right, so we got y minus y1, that's 5, equals m times x minus x1, which is a negative 3. So we actually have a plus 3 there, and we'll just do that. I see that a lot. So y minus 5 equals 4x plus 12 and y equals 4x plus 17 if we add 5 to both sides. All right, now y, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So the point must be at 1 and negative 1. Why negative 1? Because it's the, the form is y minus y1. If it's minus something, but here it looks like plus. We must have minused a negative number, right? So it must be a negative 1. And the slope is 2 because m right there, just sitting and staring you in the face. So 1, negative 1. The slope is 2, so we go up 2 over 1. And there you go. Write an equation in point-slope form of the line that passes through the given point and has the given slope m. Uh, okay, here we go again. Um, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Right, We just plug the y in and plug the x in, we plug in the slope, and we're good to go. So then we have y plus 4 on that side. We'll distribute this 2 thirds. Uh, that'll work out nicely. We've got 2 thirds x uh, minus, if you multiply 2 thirds times 6, take your time if you need to, it'll be minus 4. Um, yeah. And then we'll subtract 4 from both sides, y equals 2 thirds x minus 8. All right. Either way, I mean, once we plug in m, x, and y, this is an equation. This is something I can plug in something for x and get something out for y. It's going to take a silly amount of work if I use it in this way. I'm going to plug in x. OK, then I'm going to subtract 6. I'm going to multiply by 2 thirds. Then I'm going to add 4 to both, or I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Uh, and then I'll finally have what y is. Or we can do all that work at y by itself. Plug in something in x, multiply by 2 thirds, subtract 8, we're done. All right? So it's more convenient in this form. Onward, here we go. Graph the equation. So we got uh, x minus x1. So that's definitely a 1 because it's x minus 1. y plus 2 means that y must be a negative 2. So 1, negative 2. And the slope, what's the slope? There's just a negative outside of the parentheses. What is that negative? It's understood to be a negative 1. So it would be like up 1 and to the left 1, or down 1 and to the right 1. Remember, you only make one negative move if your slope is negative, not two negative moves. All right. Uh, now, from 1990 to 2000, number of visitors to uh, number of thousand visits by people, okay, not including house pets or wild animals to Bryce Canyon National Park increased by about 23.9 million visits per year. So they had some people come in in uh, in 90 and then uh, and then next year they had where was it 23.9 thousand more people and then in 1992 uh, they had 23.9 thousand more than the previous year. It just keeps going up. That's our rate of change. That's our slope, right? This many people showed up next year, that many more, that many more next year. Every year you move over, 23.9 thousand more people showed up. In 2000, there were about 1,102.4. So that guy, I don't know what happened to that guy, 0.4 of a person showed up. Thousands of visits to the park, right? That's why it's approximate. Write an equation that gives the number of thousand visits as a function of the number of years since 1990. All right, how are we going to do that? Well, let's see, what do we have? Well, we just talked about how we have a slope, right? That's a slope. So that's m. 23.9 is m. Um, then what do we have? They tell us uh, some information, a piece of data. In 2000, there were 1,102.4 people that showed up. 
I hope you learned from our, uh, our, our fruit, nuts, and vegetables question. When we measure years, we don't like to plug in thousands, right? That's crazy. You don't want to plug in 2,000 into your function. You'd like, rather plug in a, a smaller number. So that's why they say uh, number of thousand visits as a function of the number of years since 1990, okay? So in 2000, that's 10 years since 1990. So 10 years after 1990, we have 1,102.4 people visit Bryce Canyon. By the way, if you're trying to decide between Bryce Canyon and Grand Canyon, you should go to Grand Canyon for sure. Um, so we can use the point slope form. We got a slope, we got a point, we can use the point slope form. So we got y minus y1, 1,102.4, uh, equals the slope 23.9 times x minus x1, which is 10, over, uh, I mean, th this could be done, or we could, we could continue on uh, and solve for y. y minus 1,102.4 equals, we've got 23.9x minus 239, that's an easy thing to do, multiply 23.9 by 10, just move the decimal place over, and then add 1,102.4 to both sides, we'll wind up with y equals 23.9x every year, every next year, every bigger number that you put in for x, uh, one more and one more and one more, you're going to be getting 23.9 more every year, right? That's our slope. Uh, negative 239 plus 1,102.4, I'm going to grab the old calc, old calculator. Um, negative 239 plus, no, that's not a 9, 1,102.4 plus 800, I didn't even write it down, 863.4. All right, let's switch to purple. How many visits were made at the park in 1995? So we can use this function. Right? And think about it, which function, function would you rather plug something into, this one or this one, right? I don't like this one. I like this one. This one's pretty. We like to have our equations wind up in slope inches of form because they're so easy to use. So uh, y equals 23.9 times how many years since 90, 1990 was? 1995 was five years later. And Okay, now we're going to take out the calculator and uh, do 23.9 times 5 plus 863.4. We good there? Uh, yeah. 982.9 thousand people showed up. Let me make sure I wrote that one right. 982.9 thousand people. Oh, maybe we'll say visit. I think that's why they're saying visits. Because what if the same person visits twice? So they count as two visits. Okay. So that's important. Um, let's make sure. Is that the last one? No. We have one more page. Go away. Go away. All right. Um, write an equation in point slope form of the line shown. So they're just giving the information in a different way. They're giving us two points. Uh, and we'll use the point slope form. Um, using either one of the points. Here we go. Let's do 2 minus negative 3. And then since I use 2 first, I'll use 4 first. So 4, 4 minus negative 2. So we got 2 plus 3 is 5. 4 plus 2, right, because minus a negative. 4 plus 2 is 6. So it equals 5 6. Okay. Um, the equation in, uh, write the equation in point slope form. You can use either. Uh, given point, uh, clearly. So y minus, for this point, we're going to use minus negative 3 equals m, which we just found was 5 sixths, uh, times x minus x1, which is negative 2. OK. And then we'll check to make sure they're equivalent by writing them in uh, slope-intercept form. Here we go. Keep going. y plus 3. We're going to distribute the 5 6, so we get 5 6 x. This is a plus 2 here, so we're going to distribute the 5 6 to a positive 2. That 2 is going to cancel with the 6. We're going to get plus 5 thirds 
we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. That's going to be, here, let's do our work over here, 5 thirds, 5 thirds, right, 5 thirds minus 3. Okay, 3 over 1. So we're going to want a common denominator of 3, so this is going to become 9 over 3. 9 divided by 3 comes out to 3, which is how it started, which is important. 5 thirds minus 9 thirds is negative 4 thirds, so we've got 5 sixths x minus uh, 4 thirds. Yeah. Next, we do it again, but for the different point, and we're just going to find out. What's the point? It's the, to find out that they are the same. Okay, so y minus 2 equals, that's nicer, 5 thirds, or 5 sixths, pardon, 5 sixths times x minus 4. Okay, so we got y minus 2 equals, I'm going to distribute this 5 sixths, that's 5 sixths x. What are we going to get? We're going to get minus something, because 5 sixths times a negative 4 is going to be negative. Alright, so what, let's see, 5 six times 4 over 1 that we know is going to come out negative. This 4 is going to cancel with this 6, leaving a 3 down here, 2 up here. So we get 10 over 3. Right, so we get uh, negative 10 thirds. So what happens when we add 2 to both sides? We add 2 to both sides. So negative 10 thirds plus 6 thirds, right? Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to get common denominator here. 6 divided by 3 is equivalent to 2. So we're adding 2 here. 10 thirds, negative 10 thirds plus 6 thirds is negative 4 thirds. So 5 sixths x minus 4 thirds, just like that. It's not magic. It's math. All right, so write the equation um, of the line shown. Exact same thing, yeah? So we'll find the slope. That's going to be, say, 3 minus negative 2 uh, over 1 minus negative 2. Okay, 3 minus negative 2, 1 minus negative 2 equals 5 over 3. 5 over 3. That's 3 plus 2 and 1 plus 2. Um, then we'll substitute some stuff. Let's use the, the positive ones. That's so, so much nicer. 1 minus 3 equals 5 thirds times x minus 1. y minus 3. We're going to distribute the 5 thirds. 5 thirds x minus 5 thirds. Um, yes, and y, we're going to add 3 to both sides. We're going to add 3 to both sides. So we've got 5 thirds x minus 5 thirds plus 3, plus 3. But instead of plus 3, we need a denominator of 3, so we'll do 9 thirds. So y equals 5 thirds. Uh, let's see, 9 thirds minus 5 thirds is 4 thirds. And there's our equation. All right, well, that should be everything. It is everything, at least that relates to this homework. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.